And here it is, folks, the fourth Grand Prix Series Tournament for the Candidates Final to play Magnus Carlsen for the World Championship. My buddy from the U.S., Carl Nakamura, is in it. Don't miss any of the action. This is going to be a great, great tournament. Here is the lineup, folks, for the fourth in a series of FIDE Grand Prix tournaments. This one being played in Conti Mosquique from May 14th through the 26th. Look at this lineup. Fabiano Caruana, rated over 2,800, representing Italy, soon to represent the United States. And I'll make a point here, this fall, I guess, that he can change over to the U.S. He has dual citizenship. Of the top ten players in the world now, America represents three of them. Since Wesley So from the Philippines switched his federation to the U.S. Number two, my buddy, Carl Nakamura. Almost 2,800. He went over the 2,800 mark about a month and a half ago. Great player. I expect a lot of good things from a Carl. His chance to get in the candidates' final. Huge deal. Third, Alexander Grishuk. I think incredibly underrated. You don't hear a lot about Alexander, but I'll tell you, he's a top, top player. Young Anish Giri from the Netherlands. Another one to watch out for. Maxime Vichet-Legras from France. Another great player. Sergey Karyakin, oh my God, another great player. Tom Vesesky, who I believe is leading in points so far in the Grand Prix Series, another great player. Boris Gelfand, older but still got the guns. World Championship Challenger against Vichy Anand, lost in a tie break. Yakovenko, another great, great player. Peter Fiddler, really interesting guy, another great player. We'll see which Peter shows up. If the good Peter shows up, he can be he can be really tough. A guy I like personally, Linair Dominguez from Cuba. Another great player. When he's playing on, he's on. And a really exciting player, Jobava from Georgia. You never know what the hell Jobava is going to do. The games are always fun to watch. And there's the lineup, folks, of the final Grand Prix tournament to determine the candidates to be in the final tournament to play for the World Championship. Don't miss any of the action. This is going to be great. Hi folks, John Cordisco back again. Another game from round five of the fourth Nefide Grand Prix series. Uh, this one in Conti Mesquite in Russia. Hopefully I'm pronouncing that right. I'm picking it up from move 67. It's quite a long game, so it's a 99 move game, so I really don't want to show the whole thing. Black, Sergei Karyakin, originally from Ukraine, representing Russia in Tomaszewski from Russia, both top-notch players. tomaszewski has been basically invincible up to this fourth series, but he's having trouble in this one. Let's get to it. Karyakin is black. Tomasz excuse me, Karyakin is white, and Tomaszewski is black. King e2. It's pretty much an even game here. It's incredibly complicated. Computer shows it as 0.00, .00 so that's about as dead even as you can get. Tim Sessi decides there's, there's so many moves here. The computer likes rook on 6 to a7. Those rooks in a weird spot. They're really stuck there. These bishops are really well placed. This bishop's guarding this pawn, so these rooks can move. And these two rooks here seem to be biting on granite. Tim Sessi moves his king back. Koryakin goes rook to a2, which is very interesting. And that's also the computer's choice. King to f1 was the other choice, as well as f3. I kind of like f3 a little better. Rook up. Knight c8. e4. He's going to open it up a little bit. Decides to go knight to b6. Now we all see. Takes, takes. And that knight's in a really good spot. You have to take his bishop and take the knight, and you'll lose that really good dark, light squared bishop. F4, hitting the knight. Well played there. Knight G4. So it looks like it's starting to open up a little bit. Maybe that's why Tomaszewski moves king to h2. Bishop D4. That knight's in a really good spot. The only thing that can chase it off is the light squared bishop, and he's way over here, and there's no, it's going to take a lot of moves to get to him. So that knight's in a good spot. 
He's hitting some really some key squares here, 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 and here. Knight c8. It's going to reroute the other knight, I think. Pawn takes. He lets it go. Knight to e7. Pawn takes. Pawn takes. He sac white sacrifices. Excuse me. Black sacrifices a pawn, but it really opened things up here. And that knight is coming on e7. a4. Pawn takes. Bishop c4. Knight f5. Hitting the bishop. Bishop goes to c5. And computer likes knight takes g3 check. With a small advantage for a white, believe it or not. But I think this is where there might have been some time trouble. I think it's a very natural move. Thomas Hesse goes rook to e8 check. And it jumps up now to about a point and a quarter advantage for white. You see the pieces are starting to mill around the white king. The two knights, the rook. King here. Brings the other rook back. Bishop. And this is where I think it's a natural move as well. Very natural move. Decides to move the rook to d8 right on white's king. And it's starting to creep up now and score. It's like a two and a half point advantage. Again, the computer likes knight takes. After bishop takes, rook takes. White still has an advantage. Those two like knights look very menacing on white's king. But he makes another human natural move. Bishop takes, knight, bishop f3. Sorry about that. The phone rang. Knight takes. Bishop takes. Interesting might have been. Instead of bishop takes. Rook to g1. And after the knight moves. Bishop takes. And then the rook comes over. And that's a huge advantage for white. Absolutely huge. This bishop's going to come back here. And black says it's tied up. But after bishop takes c6. And what to do, what to do. Black is just against it now. And I, I gotta say, Karyakin looked basically invincible in the other Grand Prix series he played in. He didn't lose a game. He drew several, but he, he won some odd game out there and out there, but he didn't lose at all. And he's just getting his behind handed to him in this one. This is very unlike him. He tries to move the rook. Bishop goes to b7. Rook to c7. Bishop finally comes back to f3. That's a good spot for that bishop. Rook comes up. King c3. Well, that does. It uncovers the rook to help protect. Knight to f5. He's trying to get his pieces around the white king, but it's just not going to work. Bishop c6. Rook c7. b5. Even better. Now that pawn is coming down the board, and I got to tell you, we're on move 87 now, and these guys got to be scrambling for time. Knight to e7 is what the computer likes. We decided to go rook back. It's just a tough, tough move. After knight to e7, instead, bishop takes, rook takes. It simplifies it down a little bit, but he's still up against it. But after rook c to c8, rook to e1, knight takes, rook takes a4, knight comes over, and it's just, just brutal for him. Knight to g2 doesn't really change much, just rook to e7. But after knight to f5, rook to c4, and you can see his pieces are just converging now. G6, black is just basically stymied. And I don't care for this as much. Knights guarding each other. I know Rex Singfield that founded the Chess Club and Scholastic Center in St. Louis calls them redundant knights. They're basically covering the same squares. Bishop goes back to F3, knight. Checks. King comes up. It's just brutal for him now. Bishop b7, the rook has to move. 
Bishop a7. What's he going to do now? Bishop takes. Knight takes. Bishop c7. It's just miserable for him. Rook comes up. b6. He's still trying knight d2. King to d2, but it's just pointless. Knight to d4, trying to get the knight to help with the pawn. Bishop g2, and that's the end. Tomaszewski says that's enough. On move 99, one move short of 100. What's he going to do? He can't stop the pawn from going down. After knight checks is the only move he has, king to c3, and that's it. It's over. Anyway, folks, that's a heck of a long game, 99 moves. They must have been exhausted. Round 5 of the 4th FIDE Grand Prix Series played in Russia. I hope you enjoyed it. I want you all to remember, if you think chess is just a game, you're not playing it right. Take care, folks. Bye-bye.